do that just plain on that. Locked, we kept all the church records here, and they broke in and just threw them. The only thing they didn't destroy that we found was this uh, movie screen here. And it's it's got to be an Who was it? Jackie Jr. I was just wondering what kind of statement you're going to have for us this morning. Mr. Webster was telling me that you're not going to plan to take any real... You gentlemen, Webster, who is the president of the Open and chairman of the council of branches, uh, could not be with us today. About two minutes. Voice level pretty good. is on the way out to Mr. Turner again, he and his wife. David. Oh, then you said the police say they have that affidavit. I can only... Ask you. Comment that I have a statement from the brother.
it appeared just shortly afterwards, though, because Labor Day now, uh, we, we noticed that things had company. I've been putting off all the relatives that didn't want to come down, you know, and we're waiting for the food. the office of the fire at first. And don't leave out the word I used, the legends. And he denies that he gave the police an affidavit saying that his brother fired first. His statement first. to us says he did not. Are you aware that the ballistics tests have shown that the same gun Turner used on the, with the police was the gun that killed Mr. Cox last week in that armed robbery? I'm aware of the report, but it is not our concern to verify his innocence or guilt in robberies or burglaries. Our concern is the questionable circumstances under which the man was killed. Do you think that the low opinion in the United States generally of all armed forces is affecting Navy recruiting? Now, I don't buy the statement to begin with, Martha, because we still find that the great majority of the people in the United States know because these armed services are made up of their sons, brothers, and fathers, and we're finding a great deal of support. But I'm saying that the support is increasing uh, significantly in the last six months. Do you yourself support the idea of all volunteer armed services? Absolutely. As a commanding officer, I would uh, much prefer to have an all-volunteer crew than to have part conscripts and part volunteers. You get more out of them, they know why they're there, they do it with a desire and a purpose. Well, we'll start with the same offensive team that we started uh, last week against Detroit. Uh, we'll make one change on defense. Uh, Charlie Waters will start at left corner in place of Herb Adderley. Coach, is that uh, the result, that defensive change, of a specific game or uh, an overall review of Herb's performance? So no, it's an overall trend of performance. I'll never make a change on a player because of a, a bad game. It's made only to, to help our situation. Uh, we feel like in our defensive secondary that 
uh, we must shake things up just a little bit. We don't, we're not making the plays back there uh, on interceptions. Uh, our pursuit has not been exactly what I like uh, in this situation. So uh, we're going to see whether or not uh, we can improve that. You've given up 24 points in the last two games. Are you implying that the, the secondary is responsible for that? Well, we feel basically that any long run, not points particularly, I, I feel that any long run that is made uh, uh, in the in a game, the last responsibility lies with the deep backs. Uh, they must stop it. And uh, the last two weeks now, we've had a run by Brown, and we've also had a short pass uh, by Taylor that's carried all the way into the end zone. Now we're going to, of course, hopefully correct that. Uh, we feel like that uh, it will help us if they have an opportunity to play some, uh, both Newhouse and Montgomery. I think it will spell off Calvin and and uh, Garrison and, and enable them to be at full strength the whole ball game. This is what we'll do. Uh, Rogers' position is a little bit different in that right now Craig Martin is our number one quarterback, and he's in there to win the game or lose it. And uh, Rogers' chance of getting in the ball game right now would, are pretty much limited really to uh, injury or to real success or real failure on our part, one or the other. <laughs> Casey Colmey of Dallas hired a contractor early this summer to build a swimming pool in his yard. Five months later, the pool is still uncompleted and is cracking and leaking in several places. I asked Bob Thompson of the Better Business Bureau how the disreputable pool builder usually operates. Well, it might be in several ways, using shoddy materials or uh, perhaps even getting ahead, uh, what we call uh, where the Construction is only maybe 10% complete, and the contractor has 80 or 90% of the money from the individual. And then, of course, he might leave town or simply not complete the job. What advice does the Better Business Bureau give to a prospective pool buyer? Well, we say first check out the reputability of the firm. We can, of course, help with that angle. Check with the bank uh, that the contractor deals with for his financial responsibility require a performance completion and payment bond from the contractor and when the job is completed and you've paid the contractor require a notarized lien release which ensures that your property will be released from the lien on it. The Greater Dallas Chapter of the National Swimming Pool Institute does offer this help to the prospective pool buyer. The Institute will provide you with names of reputable pool builders within our city. Write the Greater Dallas Chapter of the National Swimming Pool Institute at Box 35663 Dallas for further information. If you have any problems or questions, please write me at Contact 8 Communications Center, Dallas. That's Contact 8. I'm Cecile Burant. And our large group, due to the fact that it's uh, it two years in time, a group that comes in September and graduates in August, two years from here. So August is our biggest time. This year we'll probably graduate some 100 to 125 students in the automotive program alone. Gene Maurice is talking about the training program in the state for auto mechanics. Is that a serious lack in the automobile dealer business? Uh, yes, uh, Jerry, it certainly is. We uh, uh, have a great many qualified mechanics in the state of Texas, but uh, one of our great problems uh, in getting uh, not only adequate service for the consumer, but in getting uh, prompt service is that there is a so shortage of qualified mechanics in many areas. Uh, Maurice Fawcett, who's speaking now, is with the Texas State Institute uh, in Waco, Technical Institute in Waco. It's a very exciting program that the automobile dealers are interested in because we have found in the short time that they have had the auto training program in Waco and on their other campuses that they have turned out a very superior mechanic uh, who is well qualified and who is a fine asset not only to the industry but uh, to the community in which he's gone to work. We're very excited about this aspect of improving and enlarging mechanics training in the state of Texas. President Nixon will have a sweeping victory over Senator George McGovern in the elections next Tuesday. This prediction was told to me this morning at a news conference by prophetess Jean Dixon. 
Mrs. Dixon is in Dallas to do a benefit luncheon for the Northwood Institute in Cedar Hill in southwest Dallas County. Mrs. Dixon, who says she has no political axe to grind, not only forecast Nixon's victory, but also told me that one-time vice presidential candidate, Senator Thomas Eagleton, will someday run for the presidency in spite of a background of psychiatric treatment. Alas, sometimes it's a blessing in disguise, as I said about Senator Eagleton. Why, he felt terrible, and the people, he was so upset. So I sent him a telegram. I says, please, Mr. Senator, do not get upset at all. This is a blessing disguise. Senator McGovern has opened the magic door for you. You will one day rise above your present peers, and then you will run for the presidency of the United States. Mrs. Dixon, will the peace negotiations now going on in Vietnam be fruitful? We're going to have negotiated peace and with honor. Now remember, if we would have a united America, we could even have a better negotiation. She said the peace will be negotiated before the elections, but that some United States prisoners of war will remain in North Vietnam as the price America must pay for its involvement in the war. For Channel 8 News on the Move, this is June Gray. Dallas's NAACP says it's not out to make trouble, but it is out to get some answers about the police slaying of an armed robbery suspect this week. 20-year-old Larry Turner was killed in an Oak Cliff gun battle with police Monday, the third police killing in three weeks. The police say they've got an affidavit from Turner's brother swearing that Turner shot at them first, but NAACP director Richard Dockery claims that the brother gave him an affidavit that alleges police fired first. Police investigators have said that bullets from Turner's 25 caliber pistol match slugs found where auto parts dealer Ivy Cox was slain. So the NAACP, along with the police department and the Community Relations Commission, is going to investigate whether policemen have needed to kill in self-defense or whether the killings were really unjustified. At the same time that the NAACP is taking a somewhat no-action investigative stand, the powerful Southern Leadership Conference is boycotting white businesses here at the Lancaster Key Shopping Center. The SCLC wants to shut down 30 white-owned businesses that they say serve blacks but won't hire them. On the other hand, the NAACP is staying out of it. Try to put in more black businesses, they say, instead of trying to ruin a shopping center that serves blacks. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move.